we're pretty light on news this week, so uh, forgive us if we just kind of ramble on a little bit here. But uh, we're going to start right off with the number one trailer of the week, which is Jessica Jones. It just premiered a couple of hours ago. And I know what you're thinking. Haven't we talked about a Jessica Jones trailer like every week for the past two months? Yes. Yes. <laughs> but this is the full trailer with actual dialogue and scenes in it. And interaction so stuff, yeah. It, a lot of things to kind of actually talk about versus <laughs> filling time. So, uh, Alan and Mario, you guys are the resident comic book fanboys, and you both have talked at length about Jessica Jones in teasers before. So, what did you make of this full trailer? It looks really good. I like it a lot. Um, it, se- it seems like they're taking one specific portion of the book and they're really focusing on it, which I like. Yeah. Um, that's something that's alluded to, and it doesn't get to it until way later in the actual series. Yeah. Uh, here, it seems like it's front and center from the beginning. Which is good. I'm, a, I think. I'm assuming we're referring to her relationship with the Purple Man, played by David Tennant. Right. 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 Okay. Like, there's other things that happen in those earlier, like, story arcs and stuff. Yeah. But they're not, like, directly related to the ongoing plot. And they can be kind of, like, moved and shifted around. And then yeah. it seems like they did that. So That makes sense. I mean, think about the first. The first arc couldn't really happen in this universe. Yeah. At all. yeah really couldn't. So that So they kind of skipped. But I did like that, that opening scene of her throwing the guy through the window. Yes. Because that's the opening scene of the book. And we also really get to see how she is as Jessica Jones because I think that was kind of like one of the right, things we that we were about. worried about because she doesn't really look like what Jessica Jones looks like in the comic or anything like that. Right. But she seems to be doing a pretty good job. Yeah, I get that She's feeling from kind her. Of, kind of attitude and kind of over things. I like the uh, and like you know he's not here anymore. He's like well he's still in my head and the what was that quote from Luke Cage? What did he say like oh you're a PI? It's like well. Booze ain't free, usually. Yeah, yeah. I think she was uh, like... speaking to the bartender at the beginning about that. But, that was Luke um, Cage. That's Luke Cage. Was it Luke Cage? All right. Well, yeah. um, I'm curious to switch over to uh, Peter's point of view on this, as mm-hmm. um, you know, somebody who just watches TV all the time, and also an avid reminder to us about the B in Apartment Twenty Three. <laughs> uh, well, I'm curious what you thought about uh, seeing Kristen Ritter in this trailer actually speaking and playing Jessica Jones. Um, yeah, well, it's interesting because all the characters I've seen her play, which is essentially the bitch from Apartment 23 and uh, Breaking the Bad. The bitch from Breaking Bad? Yeah, the bitch <laughs> from Breaking Bad. Um, that This certainly is a stronger character on those. It, well, still flawed in a lot of ways. Um, it was interesting to see her t- like sort of leading a show like that. Um, it seems like she's going to do okay with it. It seems like she can... Uh, hold her weight um, as a leading series I liked a lot of the moody stuff I liked her on the train like elbowing yeah. the window because she gets yeah. angry you know and yeah. the villain in particular I do like how menacing and how dangerous a villain that can do this is uh, the scene where she walks out of the police station in the trailer mm. and the cops are all holding guns to their own heads like just like, shows you how terrifying this could be it's kind of like people always say you know what if Xavier had these like someone that was bad had these powers and of course, you kind of have that in X Men with, uh, you know, uh, what's her face? Uh, M- Emma. 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 Yeah. Um, like, but it's never taken to quite a dark place. At least, at least on the movies side of things and TV side of things, like this. Whereas this looks like they're really exploring how fucked up a villain with that power could actually be, and how much right. damage that could actually cost. I like that. I like that it feels that dark. Um, it was like that girl that was um, talking to Jessica mm. in the witness or the interrogation room, and she was telling him about how, or telling her about how he made her jump up and down for hours and hours and hours. Yeah, yeah, that was that was like I was like that's fucked up. And you, yeah. do you know, like, well, this is just a simple thing of phrasing. It didn't say from the makers of Daredevil. It didn't say anything like that. I just said from the know. home. It's the home of yes. Daredevil. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. That's a subtle little touch, but I liked it. Sitting at the kitchen table with Daredevil. <laughs> having a nice meal with Daredevil yeah, in the home. It's interesting. Did, did you read that, that tie-in comic that uh, Bendis and they they put they actually made it? Uh, yeah, I heard about online. that, but I didn't, I didn't read that. 
it's it ties into with Daredevil. It's basically she's tracking she's track down um Stilt what's his name? Stiltman. Stiltman. Uh, what was his real name? Anyway, point is trying to track him down, and he's all fucked up. He's in the hospital, and she sneaks into the hospital to talk to him because she's tra- looking for him for another reason. But then he just kind of interrogates him like, "What happened? Like, why? Are you, you know, what happened to you?" And he's like, "Oh, I got beat up by this guy in the red suit." Hmm. So it's and then she's like interesting, and then she just you know jumps really high up into the next building. So, so what did that's you guys supposed to be related of- to the Netflix stuff? Yeah, it's supposed to no, it's supposed to be within in the Netflix universe, like, ah, like comics gotcha, and gotcha. that. Okay. Uh, well, what did you guys think about uh, Luke Cage in this footage? I mean, this is the first time we've seen him speak or anything, really, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah, um, I mean, he only had like three lines. Yeah, but he had a lot of. I mean, it was a lot of exposition stuff at the beginning, but I don't know. Just the just the look of the guy, the feel of it. I mean, he seems to have a uh, the he's got he's got it together presence. You know, he's the he's the rock where she's the the unhinged one <laughs> is not in a very yeah, stable place. Yeah, that's kind of the way he's presented in the book too. She goes to him as a friend for help. And we did get a very brief, you know, frame maybe two. Uh, glimpse at their sex scene, so yeah. that stuff yeah. is still there. And there was a lot of blood in this trailer as well. Um, it definitely uh, reinforced the brutality that a lot of the the preview screeners, people, all of those reviewers have been saying lately. You know that this is yeah. the most mature Marvel show, even one of the most mature Netflix shows. So yeah, it uh, definitely feels it's, like it. It's pretty yeah, awesome, it and I think the only thing that really I'm concerned about is her powers, because that's something that the, the specifically kind of deal with in the trailer. Mm-hmm. It's like you know what can he do, and like you know he stops the car and things like that. She uh, said a small cur- car, or, or yeah, uh, I'm just uh, running at low speed or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm just curious as to what how they're gonna deal with, like how it's gonna look. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that once think- it's actually like the full episode, you know, like. I think, if I was to guess, I would say they're going to take the unbreakable route of how her super strength or whatever works. You know, like, in Unbreakable, yeah. he, they keep adding weights to his thing and he can keep lifting them. Um, he can maybe rip off a car door. He, you know, he can do things like that, but it's not... Like, he's not suddenly picking up a car with his two hands and it's entirely in the air. Like, you're not going to see stuff like that. I don't right. Think. Yeah. It'll be, you know, the strength of, you know, maybe three or four men. Like, and that'll be about it. It feels like this is a drama that just happens to have superpowers in it. Mm. Right. You know, as opposed to a superpowered drama. Yeah. If that makes any kind of sense. But, um, you know, Daredevil was closer to a, a, a superhero show. Yeah, a, a crime procedural, essentially, uh, in certain aspects. I mean, with him being a lawyer and him taking down different criminals, whatever. It's like you can see that episodic nature, but then it's way more and more mature than any of the regular like limitless or something else would be it's like it's got some, I, I, I would argue against procedural nothing about that show was procedural yeah I, I I know that I'm saying by Netflix standards not by CBS I mean I did say limitless but you know trying to get some kind of balance there where it's like um, like there is a bit of an episode to episode basis to it but it's not proceed yeah, yeah, yeah all right i can see you. you're fine <laughs> yeah i'm right okay good you're, you're you're right peter you know what uh let's just move on to the second trailer that we have to talk about today which is also a netflix show and it's called master of none which is aziz ansari's new show um there's a full trailer uh it debuts early november so what did you guys think about this it looked good actually i thought it was quite funny yeah. Yeah. yeah, it looks really good. Yeah, it looks pretty funny. I like him in general, and it looks. I, I think I think it's it's interesting. It's kind of a commentary on Hollywood, commentary on like his perspective because of his race, and just commentary on being at that age, mm. and but making yeah, it light and funny at the same time. Yeah, and there's a lot about mm. um, or at least you can see where it'll get into uh, uh, the romantic angle of things, which he just came out with a book earlier this year called modern romance um it, you know uh it's it's pretty good it's it's got a lot of statistics about different things about him doing research about how different people in different um uh cultures uh use social media to date and it feels like in this there, there's some hints about how uh technology kind of influences how 
you know, dating in New York, I guess, would be. Because uh, it's obviously a lot, a lot of this is autobiographical to a certain extent. I mean, it's, it's right. himself being an Indian guy, Indian comic, dating in the modern age or whatever. Uh, but it, it, it looked funnier than I expected it to be, honestly. Yeah, it looks uh, really fun. I mean, obviously, I was a big fan of uh, Parks and Rec, which is where I mainly know. As he's yeah, but on, on that show, he's he's an intentionally obnoxious character. Oh, yeah. yeah. I didn't get that vibe from who he's playing yeah, in this show. just seems like a regular dude. Now, that, that, feels, that was something. Sorry. I was going to say, this feels a lot more... In the way that he's kind of just playing himself, almost. It feels almost curb your enthusiasm in terms of... I was thinking more Louis, really. Like a, like a younger yeah. Louis. Yeah, um, I maybe. Um, I think I was going to curb because I like that show, not like Louis. But <laughs> I would, I would, I would go with Louis just because curb. Is, it's like, look, if there was generational gaps, it would be Master <laughs> Nun and then Louis Middle Age and then Curb Your Enthusiasm. Like, you know, yeah. twenty years later, just <laughs> complaining sure. about absolutely everything. All of uh, hopefully this will get uh, along with those other shows as being great. But I'm, I mean, I love Louis and Curb, but uh, uh, Alan, we've stepped on your toes a few times here. So was- go ahead. and um, I was just going to say, like, you brought up Parks and Rec and how it seems more toned down than this. And that was something that I was kind of worried about. Whenever I was watching the trailer, I was like, oh, no, he's going to be, like, super annoying and obnoxious. Because he, he already has that kind of, like, high-pitched, whiny <laughs> kind of voice. Yeah. And, like, anytime I've tried to watch, like, any of his comedy specials or anything like that, like, I've just been completely turned off by that and just, like, I can't deal with it. But he doesn't have that in this. It seems like he's kind of relaxed and I enjoy that. Yeah. Um, I will say before we move on, it's um, it's a little depressing because uh, Harris Whittles, that was a, a comic and, and close friend of uh, Aziz, was going to move out to New York to work on the show. He was actually also on uh, Parks and Rec. He was one of the pet control guys, not All the right. black one, small uh, white guy. Uh, mm-hmm. He died earlier this year, so unfortunately... Uh, he didn't get to be a part of this show, but he was awesome and would have been amazing writing on the show because he, he was just like the king of crazy, dumb one-liners. Uh, he was also an executive producer and writer on Parks and Rec, for the record. Uh, but let's move right on. Um, we've got some other trailer news. Not an actual trailer to watch, but when we can watch that trailer because Preacher, <coughs> bless you, God bless you. Preacher, uh, the AMC show um, from Seth Rogen of all people will be getting its trailer debut during a ninety-minute supersized episode of The Walking Dead, the day after Halloween. I'll wait for it to hit online. Thank you very much. I will too. <laughs> Mario and I will enjoy it before you guys. I guess. <laughs> Are you guys excited to see? Any footage from this show? Yes. Oh yeah, no. That's, that's really going to be the selling factor here. Is like, is this what we expected to be from based on the comic book and knowing how vulgar that is? Uh, and you know, yeah, it's what, like what, what's the one tamer, character? But... Assface McGee or something? Arseface. 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 Yeah. There you go. Okay, so you're wanting everybody to see else if they, they go to that level, right? Well, it's not just that. I mean, it's just everything about it. Like, it's very much hinged on the attitude and the way people are. Like, there's the vulgarity is natural. Like, you may not like it, but that just fits with the book because it's written in a way where that's just the way that life is there with those people. And so, you know, it hinges kind of on that mood. And if you can't hit that mood, then it's not really the book. You're losing a little bit of the spirit of the book. Also, Christians will hate it. (laughs) I'll say that. right. (laughs) They will really hate it. (laughs) I mean, they hate a lot of things generally. but They will especially hate this. Uh, Uh... Alongside this news, Mario, how do you feel about a 90-minute episode of The Walking Dead randomly in the middle of the season? It can be good. I mean, the first episode of this season was a longer episode as well, and that didn't help it at all. So it doesn't really mean anything. Because usually, in the past, they have saved the long episodes for like their special stuff where shit hits the fan of the prison, this happens, and it usually ends up being pretty epic. Because they do want to spend more time, like whatever, whatever fight scene and what, how it plays out. Um, but the first episode of this season was like that, and it literally didn't hit any of that at all. So, 
guess that depends on how what they have planned for that episode. Yeah, no, nah, I guess I'm with you. Um, I'm also questioning how many of the uh, that airplane mini series Walking Dead thing they're going to squeeze into that 90 minute thing. It's like, <laughs> oh, you want to see the preacher trailer? Well, you should also watch half of an airplane sequence. Before. Maybe they can put half of that in the middle of the trailer. So stay tuned for the next half of the trailer, but in the meantime, watch the next 30 seconds of the Walking Dead's airplane short oh series. God. It's going to be the best thing ever, right, guys? Right. Mm. All right, so we've been talking a lot about Netflix tonight, and, um, you know, obviously earlier this year we had Vincent D'Onofrio as one of the best villains of the year. And then we had Jurassic World, and we had him as one of the worst villains of the year. And <laughs> now... He's going to be playing the wizard on NBC's Emerald City based on The Wizard of Oz. So weird. Yeah. <laughs> so for those unaware about the history of this show, <clears throat> one um, shouldn't exist. But, you know, we're in the parallel universe where yeah, wrong wait, things Wasn't that the one that got canceled and then... Or that, they, Yes. No. It's, then... it's, it's worse. It's worse than that because in 2014, NBC not only greenlit the show, Emerald City, haha, good pun joke, whatever, but it <sighs> ordered a full season, full season before anything ever aired, and then scrapped the whole thing before it aired. And now, it's and, now and now they've brought it back with Vincent D'Onofrio as the wizard, because. <sighs> They want to see Munchkin's heads be slammed into tours. Right? That's what you guys want. Well, I mean, they saw, like, you know, in the Wizard of Oz movie, the house slams on the witch, and all you see is her legs. And then they saw Vincent D'Onofrio and, and Daredevil, and was like, he got rid of the head, maybe he get rid of the rest of the body in the Wizard of Oz. So, let's see what he can do with the house. I'm going to tell you guys the. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm going to give you guys the um, the nice little description of what the show is, and then I want to hear you guys' reaction on the show overall, and then Vincent D'Onofrio, um, let's say, offering his time for for this flash wasting. <laughs> In the blink of a tornado's eye, twenty-year-old Dorothy Gale and her canine police dog are transported to another world. One far removed from our own, a mystical land of competing kingdoms, lethal warriors, dark magic, and a bloody battle for supremacy. This is the fabled land of Oz in a way you've never seen before, where worlds... Okay, fuck this. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell, man? <laughs> Do you guys have feelings? Uh, this is, this reminds me of the whole thing with uh, Alpha Male. Uh, what's his face from Jimmy Supergirl? Olsen. Yeah, Jimmy Olsen. Where it's like I was, it's I was like say is this little cute is dog this... and make it into a, a, a ferocious like canine. police canine. <laughs> like what the hell? It's like remotely the same thing. Produced by Warner Brothers. So basically, it's a dark and gritty reboot of Wizard of Oz. So basically, That's what true. this is then is Dorothy's going to be a stripper with gigantic tits. The dog's going to be a Rottweiler. Um, the wizard's a uh, fat dad who always looks like he's walking towards a barbecue table. Um, what else have we got? The Tin Man is going to be like Iron Remix. Man. And then yeah. <laughs> Scarecrow is going to be like a demented, like the... sack headed thing. From, Scarecrow like, Batman from Begins. Batman. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah. Oh, let's get Gotham Scarecrow. <laughs> That'll be good. Then the Lion. By the way. What could the Lion be? The world. Beast from Beauty and the Beast. Except he's <laughs> oh, just the like, scar. He's got like yeah. half a scar. <laughs> he's still like a super ripped six foot four guy. But oh, I'm so ugly because I have this one scar. Uh, you'll have a beard. Like, like... Abs, 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 dude. I think you're fine. Oh, big guy with a beard. That's what it'll be. So, okay. Obviously, the idea of a Wizard of Oz show doesn't entertain any of us initially. But what do you guys think about Vincent D'Onofrio, the Kingpin? Being slash, let's put fucking bazookas on raptors and send them to Afghanistan. What do you guys think about Vincent D'Onofrio as the wizard? Doesn't make any fucking sense. Without knowing the tone of the show, honestly, it means absolutely nothing. Because I have no idea what the tone of the show is. Is it going to be like Once Upon a Time? Is it going to be darker? Is it going to be 
like hearty. I don't know. It sounds like it's supposed to be like grim and once upon a time and all that stuff. Yeah. It really feels like this is That's, what it's supposed to be. Yeah. Yeah. And the wizard. I just, I don't fucking get that at all. You could do better than. Are you guys are gonna watch the pilot? <laughs> Fuck no. Oh, I'll watch the pilot. We'll we'll cover the all pilot, right. Alex. We'll do that. Well, yeah. Peter and I will watch the pilot. None of us will watch this next thing except me because I live with the guy that's obsessed with it. Oh, oh god. Gotcha. Gilmore Girls is getting oh. a revival at Netflix. That's Skinner. That's Jesus Yo, Christ, Skinner. Skinner. Skinner loves Skinner. Well, Skinner loves Skinner, but he, more than Skinner, <laughs> he loves Gilmore Girls. Yeah, I, I don't understand this. Look, it goes Batman, Gilmore Girls, Ham. Yeah, I'm somewhere around here. <laughs> Ham is probably vaguely around there, and then everything else is like it's like no, it's not, not in existence. Gilmore Girls is one of his top favorite things. I've seen probably every episode, whether I was conscious or unconscious. I have no idea. <laughs> it's just, I got it's all absorbed into me. Um, let's just go around. Does anybody have any kind of uh, history with with this show, Alan? I've seen a commercial once or twice. Cool, Mario. I remember the commercials when I, when I was in high school and I actually watched like TV regularly. Mm -hmm. uh, Peter, um, my only exposure to Gilmore Girls is a couple of sad people, uh, not Skinner incidentally, but other people uh, <coughs> that I know on Facebook uh, telling me they love it, and I've seen like, a poster for it. But that's it. Look, I'm not gonna lie, <laughs> it's good shit. It's a quality show. I've seen way worse things. Um, we talk about Arrow every week, and Gilmore Girls is a far superior show to that piece of shit. So oh, probably, yeah. Uh, well, yeah, and that's just from my experience. <laughs> but uh, I don't know the the thing about this news that makes it interesting is this is one of those cases where a lot of people kind of immediately react and go. Yeah, but it ran for like seven seasons. Why would anybody care? Why does this need to continue? Um, but I, but the the initial showrunner actually left before the final season, so she never got to tell her final story with the Gilmore's. So it's kind of like you know this show had a fan base for a reason, and it was based off of this certain voice, and it lost it in its late years. Now it gets to... So the final season of Gilmore Girls is like the Dan harmon series of uh, Community. Yes. Imagine imagine if Community ended with season four. We'd all be clamoring for a season five or a movie or something with Dan Harmon to be involved. This is essentially the same thing except nobody that watched Gilmore Girls gets on Twitter and tells everybody to watch Gilmore Girls. They just kind of silently go to themselves. Well, that was disappointing. <laughs> You know, honestly, the biggest thing about this news that gets me is just that, okay, what's next to come back? Like, seriously, almost anything obscure or, not even obscure, but, like, we're getting shows Look, from 20 years ago. Gilmore Girls Full just House. feels random. Full House is even more random. It's, right, that's more, that's the thing here, is like, a lot, some people are jumping at Gilmore Girls, I'm like, Full House is get Fuller House, really? This is a, that's a fucking college humor sketch that's not a real thing that happens to people so we're is. due so we're due for uh everybody loves raymond Home improvements um, coming every, back. everybody Home loves improvement. raymond dot 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 more yeah and that. Home improvement uh um, so teenage butches family matters middle -aged comeback Ugh. yeah see these are I don't know. This one makes sense. It's just the relationship between a mother and a daughter. Like that's the show that that can be extended. It's something else. Did I hear a groan over there? <laughs> I thought you, I thought you, I thought you were groaning at my. There are oh. people in Alex's house. Oh, you just so oh. All of our audience oh, knows. Nobody knows who that is. He's talking about ghost. Oh, he's talking to us. Anyway, oh, 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 what a firefly! There a, sorry, there was a ghost that burped that? over here. I thought it was moaning at me. It was well, see, very I'm, not even, I'm not even bringing that. I don't want to be the guy who's like, oh no, why is this coming back and Firefly's not? I don't even want Firefly to come back unless Joss Whedon yeah, wants yeah, to do yeah. it. Like, seriously. Oh, or or, or if Drew Goddard it. does it. Yeah, or whatever. Like, but the point, <laughs> the shock that I have here is just how many random things are coming back. And you're telling me the Gilmore Girls isn't that random? Okay, but a lot of this stuff is random. Yeah. A lot of it is. Yeah, but I, think... I mean, 
things change. I mean, look at make like metal like just I feel in general there's just uh, if you can get out on the right hype and you get it out and you get people excited about it, people will follow. Like I think Metal Gear Solid Five is a perfect example of that. If it completely killed every other game in that series that's come out as far as sales. It even got Al interested in video games. He didn't actually yeah, play it, it, but he watched it. Although not to spoil a uh, tenet a bit later, it did not become number one for the US in September. <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, it's it's, it's still the, drastically better than the other ones. But and then why, if you if you played three or two or any of the other ones, and you guessed, oh, five is the one where it's really gonna sell. You know, would anyone actually make that prediction? No, you wouldn't actually ever believe that. So I think it really depends. And I think that's what people are banking on. They're trying to get people talking about it and creating like hype, so that when it does come back, all these people are like, oh, well, by the way, it's on Netflix, so you can catch up on all of it, and then well, you're ready for yeah, well, season nine. Yeah, that's the thing, is Netflix have got Gilmore Girls seasons one to seven probably on their service. People are watching it, and they're like, oh, we can fund another season of this, and people will go back and watch more of it, because they'll be like, oh, I want to get cut up, or whatever. Yeah. yeah, this is always the interesting thing about Netflix, is they don't release their numbers, so we can only really speculate based off of whenever they start negotiations with somebody. It's like infuriating, by the way. <laughs> it's very infuriating, but it's like a few months ago when we had news about them potentially bringing back Prison Break for a limited run revival. Yeah. And, you know, that's something that went through its ups and downs, ended, and then even had a TV movie to wrap up whatever else was there. But because it's done enough numbers on Netflix, they see a value in extending yeah. it. So obviously there's something there with Gilmore Girls, which, by the way, has been on Netflix for a less amount of time than Prison Break was. For talks, I mean, this has only been on this year where Prison Break's been on for at least a year and a half or so. It's, I don't know, I, I it's not one of the more random ones. Full House was the really random one for me. Um, the most random thing Netflix has ever brought back was, um, you remember that Ryan Reynolds uh, DreamWorks snail movie Turbo? They made an <laughs> yeah. animated series about That's that right. on Netflix. That's weird. It did. For some reason, I guess they just invested early on. And they were like, how can this fail? The snail that goes fast can't fail. I'm, then, I'm, he... Actually, I'm, I'm in full support of Sabrina the Middle-Aged Witch now, now that we've been talking about this. <laughs> Again, it sounds like a college humor sketch. But, <laughs> exactly. No. But, I mean, given this news and all the stuff that's been given, is doesn't sound that unrealistic. <laughs> can we just name this yeah. episode Life is a College Humor Sketch? Because I'm down for that. All right, let's uh, talk about the last major news thing here, which is CBS is developing a sitcom about obeying the Bible literally. Because that, that won't means. get any controversy at all. I, I would like to point out, like, you sent us this article, Alex. I did, I went, which is an read, AV Club article. I went and read this article, <laughs> and it is written as though it is a verse in the Bible. <laughs> it's amazing. Okay, we should say... You should go to the AV Club and read this article because I had, I had just... to I had to really concentrate because I was like, what the fuck are they saying here? It it starts out with like revelations, and then I think like the the date it was posted, but as if it was a uh you know verse whatever. Um, yeah, no. Uh, it's I mean this is ridiculous. I left this for last because it's it's barely a news item. It's like, I, uh, okay, it's, here it's based on a book. Um, here, 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 yeah, it's based on a book. Uh, the the concept of the show is it centers on a type A emotionally reserved newlywed who invites his wife's twin sister to stay with them and suddenly finds himself in a world of oversharing and a third wheel in his own marriage. That's what the show is about, and then just like they follow the Bible too, literally or something. <laughs> Does that mean like stoning know. women that don't wear hats on Sundays and things like that? Is that? Is it that says literally. Act? So it says, yeah. Apparently, the guy who wrote the book lived his life like this for I think it was a year, and like he was like, okay, I'm gonna just live my life as the Bible says, and then he like wrote about it, and now they're turning it into a TV show on CBS. So I'm guessing it's going to be. Like depressing then. <laughs> He's gonna be yeah. depressed the whole time. What's what's great is that the like the banner image that they use is basically the Westboro Baptist Church. And, like all the signs and stuff that they hold up. So I'm yeah. imagining that we're gonna get a lot of that in the show. Oh, lovely. Yeah. Controversy. 
Yeah. Above anything else, you should go read this AV Club article because it's very entertaining. And the writer of it really put a lot of effort into writing it as a Bible verse. So yes. Check that out. It's, 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 it's worth your time. Um, not worth your time are a bunch of shows that died this week uh, in a new recurring segment we have, which is Rest in Peace Shows. Rest in Peace, The Player, you Wesley Snipes NBC show that ran for nine episodes. That's right. You were ordered for 13. And even though you're in the middle of recording your ninth episode right now, you've been cut down to nine. You're dead. Good job. <laughs> and the only other death we have is... Uh... Oh, I'm sorry. Rest in peace. Mythbusters. You ran for 14 seasons. Oh, that's actually quite a notable one. On Discovery Channel. Anybody have any uh, actual, like, final words to say to, to Mythbusters? Did, did, did it mean anything to you? I, I watched it a bit whenever I was in high school, but I, I didn't realize it was still going on, honestly. I think but, they ran out of Myths to Bust. Well, it, it, it quickly ran out of Myths to Bust. <laughs> it just turned into a, I never really liked that show. It was fine. I, I don't um, think they were for it trying to be more educational. It, they weren't too focused on that part. I didn't like that. Um, it uh, it varied between seasons. I really enjoyed it early on because they it was just um, um, Jamie and Adam, and it really focused on how they built the things, what went wrong with how they built it, how they needed to rebuild it. Like it was a whole process, and that took the full hour. And then at a certain point, they incorporated the B team, and then that was all right for a little bit. And then after a while, that started to get a little bit grating, and then. Uh, I fell off of the show, but as I hear from the internet, uh, you know, they reconfigured the show and in the past couple of years it went right back to just Jamie and Adam doing all of the stuff and the same kind of process of working through something. So uh, apparently it went back to, to basics near the end, but yeah, they're ending it. And 14 years for this show, I mean... Can you really name any other Discovery show that you actually the name have of? watched? Yeah, like <laughs> it, anything. <laughs> well, Shark Week doesn't count because it's not... Crocodile you know, Hunter. Shit now. Crocodile oh, Hunter Crocodile. was on Discovery Channel, I think. Or was that Animal Planet? Animal Planet. That was definitely Animal Planet. Was it Animal Planet? Okay, then never mind. Yeah. So yeah. Rest in peace, Mythbusters. You've been busted. Busted. <laughs>